On a summer's evening in 2003 up this path, a horrific murder took place. Schoolgirl Jodie Jones was brutally murdered just over the wall here. Boyfriend of five months, Luke Mitchell, is currently serving life in prison with a minimum of 20 years for what happened that night. This crime happened right on our doorstep and we're going to retrace the steps to find out more about this case. Luke Mitchell and Jodie Jones had only been in a short-term relationship for around about five months. Both students at St David's High School in Dalkeith. Age 14, they arranged to meet on this path just like any other evening that they would. Jodie never turned up as planned. Luke returned home and started to make a meal. The alarm bells were raised at 10pm when Jodie never returned home. A search party was soon called and they went out on the hunt for Jodie. Rose Dyke Path is a woodland shortcut connecting the estates of East Houses where Jodie lived and New Battle where Luke stayed with his mother Corrine and older brother. Luke Mitchell took his German Shepherd Mia to meet the rest of the search party on Rose Dyke Path. The others present were Jodie's gran, her sister Janine and Janine's boyfriend Stephen Kelly. In the witness statement of all four members of the search party, it was said that they all walked past the only breach in the wall that lined Rose Dyke Path before Luke's dog began alerting them to the spot on the wall. Luke double backed on himself climbed through the V-break in the wall, turned left towards the area identified by his dog on the other side of the wall before making the gruesome discovery of Jodie Jones's mutilated body. Crucially, when this case came to trial, the other three witnesses changed their statements. They claimed that Luke had gone directly to the V-break in the wall without being alerted by his dog. It was therefore determined that this meant Luke knew where Jodie's body was, that he had guilty knowledge of the crime. Luke Mitchell's DNA was not found at the crime scene. However, he immediately became prime suspect despite him having an alibi. Other males linked to the scene included John Ferris, Jodie's cousin, who was one of the so-called moped boys whose bike had been seen leaning against the V-break in the wall at the exact time of Jodie's death. The other moped boy was named as John's friend, Gordon Dickey. James Faulkner was later linked to the scene as his DNA was found on a discarded used condom. Faulkner was traced after his DNA was associated to a crime three years later. He argued that he'd been at the site alone masturbating. Stephen Kelly, who was the boyfriend of Jodie's sister at the time, was linked via DNA to the top that Jodie was wearing at the time of her death. This was explained away as Jodie had borrowed her sister's top, therefore it would be expected that Kelly's DNA would be present on it. Finally, Mark Kane was named by Scott Forbes as being a potential suspect. Kane was a residential student at nearby New Battle Abbey College. He attended Scott Forbes' flat in Leith the day after Jodie was murdered. He had scratches to his face and was known to carry a knife. Scott Forbes stated that he took Mark Kane to Dalkeith Police Station, but the police seemed disinterested. Once the search party met up, Luke claims the dog, Mia, alerted him to this hole in the wall. Where, over it, lay the dead body of Jodie Jones. Luke Mitchell has always denied this murder. There was no forensic evidence linking him to the crime scene. This was despite it being a bloodbath. The cause of Jodie's death was a cut to the carotid artery in her neck, which would have caused death within two minutes. Jodie lost over five litres of blood in what was a frenzied attack. However, not a drop of blood was found on Luke Mitchell. So this is the unfortunate location where Jodie Jones's body was found. Her injuries were horrific. Her head was almost severed. Her hands were tied behind her back. She'd received some awful, awful wounds. Jodie's body was mutilated. There were 12 to 20 cuts to her neck, as well as extensive injuries to her face, chin, neck and head, consistent with punches, kicks and blows with a blunt weapon. There were penetrating injuries to her forehead and tonsils, a deep cut to her face, and the cuts around her eyes, breast, arm and abdomen were inflicted after death. Bruising and cuts to her hands and arms indicated that she tried to defend herself. The eyewitness, Andrina Bryson, who remembered seeing a male and female at the East House's end of the Ronsdyke path, thereafter identified Luke Mitchell from a sheet of images shown to her by the police. There was no physical ID parade conducted at the time, but her identification was crucial, as it suggested Luke had been with Jodie shortly before she was murdered. 
During the trial, witness Bryson was unable to identify Luke Mitchell as being the male she'd seen on the day of Jodie's murder. This is despite Luke Mitchell's image being on the front page of every newspaper. So this is the opposite end of the path, where someone drove past and seen someone who they thought met the description of Luke Mitchell having a conversation with Jodie Jones. Was it Luke Mitchell, or was it someone that just looked very similar to him? Criminologist Dr Sandra Lean will join me on the Salt and Sauce show next week to discuss a crime that could be one of Scotland's worst miscarriages of justice. Is the right man behind bars, or is Jodie Jones' murderer still on the loose?